no, 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 jump. No, 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 no. Let me, let me explain myself, okay? No, 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 let me explain myself before you come up with any rash decisions, okay? Uh, not once in that entire ride did I unethically sniff that woman. I, I didn't. Oh, you don't know. You don't know what unethically sniffing is here, okay? You with your lawyer friends and you have no idea what that means. Well, let me explain something to you, Joe. Ask any of your friends this, and they'll all agree with me here. Um, unethically sniffing someone is just sniffing them for no reason, right? No, no, no reason whatsoever. But if someone sniffs you first, like this woman did, she sniffed me, remarked on my lack of deodorant or whatever she actually said. I don't know what was in writing here, but that means that opened up a legal contract for me to sniff her back. Of course I had to do it when she was in the car, Joe. How would I, how would I know if I would see her on the streets? I may die without sniffing her back. And then what do we have there? We have an incredibly rude transaction right there. That's, that's completely unfair on my part. And I'm not gonna sniff her seat like some sort of fucking pervert, Joe. I mean, what, what do you expect me to do? Just sniff her seat and just not be the weirdest guy ever? No, look here, I am not gonna be the bad guy because she, uh, Joe, I'm gonna have to call you back. I'll, I'll call you back. I'll call you. Well, fuck you. You're fired too then. Hi there. Z here. And um, as you can see, I'm a driver now. That's right. I, uh, I pick up people. I pick up businessmen. Mostly frat boys who are drunk off their ass. And then I just kind of pray that they don't throw up in my back seat. I mean, this whole thing sounded way better on paper. And then when you're actually doing it, it's... It's actually quite terrible. But anyways, you will have no idea where I got this idea from. It seems like our boy, Nigel Bach, has finally come out with another Bad Ben movie, which is like, I think, the seventh. So I think it's giving Transformers a run for their money right now. And uh, in that movie, uh, guess what? He looks like Tom just takes a job driving people around. It's kind of like Uber, but they don't call it Uber for, you know, legal reasons. And I thought, hey, if this guy right here could do it, if Tom Riley... The, the, the train wreck of a protagonist that we have, the guy who cusses at ghosts and is the whitest guy in a horror film I've ever seen in my entire life. If he can do it, why can't a neckbeard like me? You know what I mean? And if he... I'm sorry to cut this off short, guys, but if I don't answer this, he's just going to keep fucking calling. So, hey, guys, you just keep watching. Go ahead and have a good time. I hope you really enjoy the review. And uh, make sure you get something to drink and like and subscribe and whatever the fuck you need to do. Yeah, Joe. No, I do not drink and drive. Well, those beers are there for when I'm at a stoplight. That way I'm technically not driving, so you can't count me for drinking and driving. Don't take those fucking beers. Don't take those beers out of my car! All right, so you can't have a Bad Ben movie without the beginning starting with the whole the following footage is assembled by every fucking camera ever taken in this particular town. Cue card followed by a close-up on our man Tom Riley talking about how he won his old car back from an auction. <laughs> nice CGI there, guys. Really professional looking. Fantastic. So Tom is now mobile and is officially ready to start his new life of driving drunks around and praying that he doesn't get shot in the back of the head with a 9mm for the $12 in his pocket and that sweet ass fedora on his head. And at this point I was thinking, wait, 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 please tell me that Tom is just going to pick up a bunch of really weird characters on his first night of Drop You Off. That's the fake Uber company that he's working for in this movie. And he's just going to overreact to each incident. Because that would be a really, really great idea for this schlocky shit. Anyway, after he finds an amulet sent to his house and coming face to face with the embodiment of a menstrual cycle, Tom heads out for his first fare. And it was at this time I noticed it's literally taken us six movies to finally get away from the house that we all know so dearly. Sure, it's in a car that we've seen several times before, but at least we're not reverting to the previous films. Gary? Yeah? Hi, I'm Tom. I'm your drop you off driver. So, uh, what's this here? That is a ride share driver's dash cam. There's one in the back that sees the road behind me and in case I get rear-ended. There's one out front in case I have an accident. And then there's this one inside that keeps an eye on, on me and the passengers in case there's any problem. Um, 
Uh, okay, a little bit of a roadblock here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 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 they're having this back and forth with this client, and the client is asking him why he has all these cameras here, and he explains why he has his cameras there, and it's a whole scene why he just establishes why there's even cameras into the vehicle, and um, it's something that competent filmmakers do. And I'm not going to lie, I wasn't really ready to give compliments this early into the movie. Um, so I guess a simple clap would do well. S simple clap. Let's not let's not overdo it. He may fuck this whole thing up still. But g good job, Nigel. That's exactly what you do in films. Good job. So where am I taking you? Uh, 352 Steel Manville Road. And it's ruined! We're going right back to the fucking house! No, Tom, no, please! I just want a movie away from the house. I just want one movie where... And Tom's driving away. Tom's just leaving him at the fucking house, and it's focusing on this guy. Please don't make this a Steelmanville road where it focuses on a couple other characters instead of Tom. Most of us are here for Tom. Please don't make it about this guy. I don't really give a shit about this guy. I don't really care what his preferences are. His every... Oh, thank God we're back to Tom. Whew! That's crisis averted, guys. Just ignore everything I just said. We're back in the green, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's see how much of a creep his second customer is. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm your drop-you-off driver. How you doing tonight? Pretty good, you? Good. Ah, just, a, just another dude that he looks like he hired from the local community college, so... Okay, maybe this isn't a movie. Maybe this is actually his entire first day of Uber, and he just decided to record it and is giving it out to us. I, I honestly don't know what's happening here. So where am I taking you? 352 Steelmanville Road. Okay, what the fuck is happening? Is someone having a rave at his old house? Is one of my bad Ben fan fictions where Ben kills a bunch of acid-dropping teenagers who are partying at the local well-known haunted house and Tom Riley has to burst in and save them? Or is Nigel just completely out of ideas? Okay. Okay, so we have two people there. Okay. So what's the percentage of the third person wanting to go there as well? 352 Steelmanville Road. Apparently really fucking high. But to be fair, to be fair, learning more about this guy, he's definitely a cannibal. So it helps a little bit. And you look like a guy that likes a good steak. How do you like it cooked? Very rare. See that? See that line? That's how cannibals talk. That's exactly how they talk. They say things that they like things rare and they like things bleeding and they they swing chainsaws around. I've been around enough horror films to know exactly how cannibals talk. And guess what? That motherfucker's a cannibal. And so after taking a little nap since Mr. Cannibal wanted him to wait a little bit longer, most likely because he needed more time to kill and eat those other two guys, Tom gets impatient and dashes right back inside to figure out what's taking that man so long. And again, credit where credit is due, this scene is actually really nerve-wracking. He slowly makes his way around this oh-so-familiar house, but everything seems a little foreign now. Everything doesn't seem like the way it was before when we looked at it through all the different pre-designated cameras in the area. And then he hears something coming up from the basement. And when he opens up the door, several pairs of shoes are just waiting on the steps. And every single time he closes the door, a lot of noise would happen and they would get closer to the top. Everything is incredibly unnerving at this point, and it actually made me kind of think, oh shit, I'm going to actually be jump scared, and I usually don't get jump scared that easily. Until Boots seeming to come straight from the set of Who Framed Roger Rabbit clumsily run their way up the stairs and make me laugh harder than any previous awkward car conversations that they had thus far in this film. And boy howdy, there has been a lot of that. This movie so far has been 10% scares in the biggest quotation marks I can put in there, 30% Tom talking to himself while driving around, and 60% Tom talking with the passengers who have the charisma of a used condom. So, after going through this whole spooky ordeal at the house, Tom does what most people would do in the situation. Go in the dark, desolate, haunted forest in the backyard where any cannibal can jump out at him. Solid stuff. Solid stuff, Nigel. Vampire! Vampire! I was wrong! I was wrong 
for once in my life. It wasn't a cannibal. It was something much more generic. It was a vampire. We have a vampire, ladies and gentlemen. Door ajar. What the fuck was that out there? Jesus Christ. Is he gone? Oh, Jesus Christ! And a bad jump scare from one of the dudes that he dropped off before. Oh, fantastic job, Nigel. You're just checking off all these horror icons, aren't you? Get the fuck off of me. And a badly choreographed throwing him out of the car part? Oh man, I give this entire sequence a oh hi Mark out of 10 for how fucking awkward it was. Very good, I enjoyed this. This, this Finally, it's starting to get to bad band proportions here. Well, I guess it takes a lot more than a vampire attack and leaving a young man behind to die to stop Tom from fulfilling his nightly quota because he goes right back to the job at hand. And speaking of that young man before, I'm sure you're all wondering what happens to him. Oh no! <laughs> Apparently vampires can jump like the Ang Lee version of the Hulk in this movie. I, I, I tell you, I tell you, it looks it looks really innocent, but I know what Nigel's doing. He's building. He's building this universe because he knows Marvel did it right, and he's going to bring out a Bad Ben universe. You just watch. Wait. Wait, please. please don't bite me again. Did he see anything? He went around back and then came out screaming. He cannot have witnesses. Get him on the app. Get him to come back. Don't... don't kill me. <laughs> Acting. Well, Vampire has a minion now, but uh, I guess none of that really matters because we just cut right back to Tom picking up his next person. So, I guess we're gonna go there too. Mitch? Yeah. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm your drop-you-off driver. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Good, thanks. Well, I'm doing better now. Oh! <sighs> He's just picking up another guy, just another normal guy, and they're making normal conversation, and I'm guessing he's taking... Holy hell, okay, well, uh, apparently Nigel even thought this entire thing was getting too boring. I, I I don't know why he didn't just make a cut here, I don't know why he's fast-forwarding everything. The audience would have been none the wiser if you strategically put in a few cuts and then just appeared to where you're dropping it off, but um, I guess thanks for making editing easier on me, I, I guess. Call me if you need a ride back. Sure. What a weird ass fucking place to get dropped off. Oh well. What the fuck is. Oh, dude! Dude! You left your wallet. Where the fuck is this guy? God damn it. Uh, okay. Okay, here we go. Yep, going right back into the dark woods like any normal sane human would be. No, no, no. They wouldn't just keep the wallet and maybe call the guy in the morning to deliver it then. No, 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 no. Some guy is getting dropped off in a desolate area of a big forest, and he walks right into the forest. And, of course... Tom is just going to go follow him. Fantastic. Man, I wonder if it's going to be like more vampires and maybe a homeless orgy or... What the fuck are you? I got your wallet. Oh. Blair Witch Cultists. Y yeah, sure. I mean, we're just hitting all the horror monsters here with this movie. We're just getting all of them. Who cares about having one horror monster? We need all of them for a Bad Ben Halloween movie. Now all we need is witches, some zombies, and at the end finish the entire thing with like a demon or like a demonic possession, and then we'll have the perfect Halloween film. Give it to me, Nigel. Door ajar. What's in the bag? Uh, just some stuff. Um, d did I call it? Like, <laughs> did I call it? I mean, I know what happens because obviously I wrote the script, which meant that I needed to finish the film so I could talk about it. But even in my notes, I wrote down that there was going to be a witch, there was going to be a zombie, and there was going to be a demonic force. Is this a witch? I mean, it's a lone woman with a mysterious bag who filled with who knows what. Maybe bat wings and newt eyes and the box collection of Harry Potter on Blu-ray. I mean, it could really any be anything. Anything to Dude, your mind. Out. What the fuck? Over here. Oh, what the fuck is in this bag? Or it could be a decapitated head. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, of course, witches walk around with them all the time. Dude, what did she do to you? Is, <laughs> is that all you had to say?
Is that all you have to say? What did she do to you? T Tom, I, I could ignore the fact that you didn't call the police when you were seeing the vampire chowing down on the human back there. I, I could also look the other way with the whole witch cult thing, probably sacrificing a puppy in the woods there. But this, this is probably something you could do something about. You have the evidence right there. Just take me back to my body. Christ, all right. All right, so what should I do about her? Fuck her. All right, never mind. I, I, this entire situation is so weird. It, it's so obtuse. I, I have no idea what to think about it. Tom is taking this whole talking decapitated head situation like he just found some joints in her bag accidentally. You know, he's surprised to begin with, but not really that surprised after the initial discovery. And the woman coming out and treating her Driver pulling away very slowly, might I add, because I'm, I'm sure with how slow he's pulling out, she could have easily just ran up and tried to stop him, but whatever. But she's taking all of this as like a minor convenience. Like, oh, well, there goes the driver I just paid for with my talking severed head. Oh, boy, what a, it's hard to find good help these days. Like, I, I haven't had to transport a body part in my entire life, but if I did, and I was definitely trying to make it hidden... I would probably be a little bit more frantic about my accomplice making his getaway. By the way, I'm counting this as a zombie, okay? I'm counting this as a zombie. All we need is a demonic possession or maybe a full body devil to come by to complete our bingo card. That's all I'm going to say. But anyways, weirdness aside, 10 minutes later, he gets to the location. The head told him to go where the witch is there. Big surprise. She asks him for the head and the head says, nah, it'll be fine. Go ahead and give her to me. He hands the head over, and then he leaves. I, I, I don't know why the head told him to leave to begin with, but I, I, to be honest, I don't even know what the fucking plot is anymore. I thought the vampire guy was going to be the plot, but we haven't seen him in the past half an hour because he keeps driving people away, and everything is just so awkward. Everything is just so all over the place. What is even happening? How could it get any more random than this? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the motherfuck? All right, demon. That's a demon possession. If I've ever seen one here, we got ourselves a bingos, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and take a shot. I mean, I know that you can't have a bad Ben movie without Tom fighting a supernatural demon and uh, <laughs> killing it in the most great way possible, you know, by cutting off its head and the sliding door to his minivan, but what brought this to happen? Tom came to pick up somebody. He, he hit the scarecrow. The lady said that she was picked up by somebody else. He tries to leave and demonic scarecrow attack because why not? Fine, fine. The, the scene was very hilarious with how badly he was trying to get away and everything. But let's wrap this movie up by bringing our attention back to the main vampire plot. For the love of God, let's actually keep this in a row here. So the minion finds where Tom's home is, which is now a campsite. That's really fucking depressing that he's reduced to a campsite, but whatever. He steals his car, gets time to come back to the house where... <laughs> Tom do doing his own stunts now. That's fantastic. I, I didn't expect him to be the white, balding, middle-aged, foul-mouthed Jackie Chan, but, you know, now that I saw that, I could definitely see it. I could definitely see it. Anyway, vampire finds him, pulls him out of the car, a fight ensues, the camera has a seizure because we're trying to make this whole thing very epic. <laughs> well, <laughs> we have Tom Miley. Not only can he fight demons, he's a vampire hunter now. Holy shit, who would have guessed that Tom could use a basic stick that he found on the ground, not sharpened, not any way intimidating, and push it hard enough to not only puncture flesh, muscle, but the bone, and destroy the heart, even though it kind of looks like he stabbed the vampire in the kidney. I, I, who would have guessed this? Not I, if you ask me. Not I. Okay, so... So now that our badly put together antagonist has been killed as fast as he was introduced, let's wrap this whole thing up in a perfect bow. Uh, let's let's drive the vampire minion home for five whole minutes listening to Tom rant about everything under the sun. Told you. I fucking told you. You should know where you're going. 
money's not going to do you any good if you're fucking dead now, is it? You know what? That's why I don't have fucking kids. You're why I don't have fucking kids. I'm fucking looking. Jerk off flashing your fucking lights. Why don't you get a little fucking closer on my tail, you motherfucker? God damn it, I hate drivers around here. After I drop you the fuck off, I don't need to see you again. And let me tell you something, motherfucker. I bet you that fucker, what do we have, nine pints of blood in us? I bet you that fucker's got ten. Do you know how, how lucky you are to have me as a driver? Because I'm Tom Riley, all right? No ghost, no fucking vampire, no anything. What the fuck is that? Oh. Anyway, nothing can fucking, I, I just seen. Uh, cut, cut, can we, have, can we have a cut there, Mr. Bach? Cut, no, we're just, we're just going to leave that blatant breaking of character moment in your movie. And your movie that you put out for other people to watch. Fantastic. No, I love this. Good good job. Holy hell. Who did you have to blow to get into this movie, guy? And of course, the movie wouldn't feel complete unless it ended with Tom picking up an obese person dressed in a robe and a bad wig. Holy shit, what a movie. What a movie. This is definitely one of the better Bad Ben movies in the entire series, but I wouldn't really get on the level the original or maybe Badder Ben. The plot is all over the fucking place. So let's establish here. An antagonist vampire is trying to get to Tom because he's a witness to a crime that he committed. But let's not stick to that plot and let's just have him driving around picking up a bunch of random and quirky characters for 30 minutes before resolving the movie just as quickly as they introduced it. Again, I've said this in every single one of my Bad Ben movies. This is not a good movie in the traditional sense. Hell, I haven't taken any movie appreciation or production classes of any sort, and I could see some of the glaring obvious issues with the plot, the acting, the flow, and everything in between. But it is still entertaining. I would much rather watch this than anything made from Jeff Prophet or anything found on the YouTube trending page or any Lily Singh late night skits, okay? This guy's movies are a mess, but they are the kind of mess that you will not be tired of watching. Like your drunk aunt arguing with your equally drunk mother about which Twilight side to be on. It's an absolute dumpster fire, but I'm more than happy to watch it every single time. I have rewatched a lot of the other movies multiple times because it's just fun to sit there and watch a man who obviously enjoys making the movies. And guess what? I've said this many times before, it comes through. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a great time and cheers.